If you're wondering how to create a PDF in Bubble, then stay tuned. In this video, you're going to learn how to use the PDF Conjurer plugin to create a PDF in Bubble. As you can see on this app, we're looking at an exercise app or yoga app. And what we're going to be doing for this video is we're going to be working with this exercise history, the data from this, and we're going to be putting that into a PDF and laying it out. What you need to be worried about or just, you know, thinking about uh, in terms of your world is uh, what data do you want to display onto your PDF? So in this uh, video, we're going to learn how to create a PDF from scratch. There are some other uh, PDF generators plugins out there on Bubble that will allow you to take a screenshot of the uh, page itself. But what we're going to do is we're going to be using a PDF to build it from scratch because sometimes, you know, and we're going to do that in a table because often folks will want to give a report on something, maybe the statuses of a number of items and needing a table uh, reporting on that from the from their bubble database. So let's actually take a look at the data that we'll be reporting with for this exercise history. We're going to report on the class, the date that it was created or kind of taken, and then who was created by the user and we'll just grab their, their name. So those are the three columns that we're going to be reporting on. And let's go ahead and go and grab this plugin. Um, as you can see here, I've actually got it installed. We'll just, I'll just show you which one it is here. Uh, it's this free PDF Conjurer plugin. And again, like I said, there are many other types of plugin, uh, PDF generating plugins, and some of them um, allow you to take a screenshot of the page. What you're gonna learn here in this video and kind of the takeaway is you're gonna get to look under the hood at everything that is uh, going on with this plugin and then determine if it's right for you. So in 10 minutes or so, you'll be able to know, okay, yep, this is what I want, or no, because there are other uh, tutorials out there that show off creating a, a screenshot. So uh, I'm just working here and I'm just gonna make this button and we're gonna create a quick UI uh, here. We're gonna drop in a uh, pop-up here. And we'll just have this pop-up display when, um, when the PDF is generated. So I'm gonna drop in a piece of some text here and then a button, and oh yeah, let's see. So I'm gonna say download, and it could do something else as well. And then one thing that we need to do is now that we've dropped that PDF plugin onto the, uh, we've installed that PDF, we need to drop that onto the page. Okay, and so now with that accessible, this, this element is gonna allow us to do some things. One of those things is that over in that pop-up, we'll call this pop-up PDF, here is we're going to access that PDF's PDF model A's saved PDF. So after the PDF is generated, we'll be able to see that file name here, and then I'll also show you how to save that into a database field if you wanted to email it to someone or include it in some other kind of report or, or download it. So we'll see all of that. Okay, next up, let's go and start to build our PDF. So if someone clicks generate PDF, or what we're going to want to have happen, is we're going to do uh, we're going to just search for all the different actions from this. So we're going to start a PDF model, and that's going to be this one here. And here you can choose the size of the PDF, the orientation, and some basic uh, margin stuff. So we're just going to leave that as it is. And then next up, we're going to activate a footer. And on this one, what I want to do is just make sure it's centered left. So I like that. And then we're also going to activate a header. I'm going to do this first. Or no, actually it won't matter because the thing the thing that I'm doing is coming next. Uh, okay, so then next up I wanna what I want to do is I wanna say uh, insert an image. And what I'm doing is I'm setting up so the PDF, think about it as a blank canvas, just exactly like a bubble canvas. And what I want to do with this is I'm gonna drop in a logo just for the top left. And I'm gonna give it an image width and height. And then uh, one thing to note, when you're taking things and how you create layouts, you insert stuff, uh, you insert or, insert or create text, 
images, tables, and so on. There's You can check out the plugin page for all the documentation. But in this one, we're just going to be doing the simple thing where we're going to insert this image into the header. And we're going to use custom margin here. So we're going to say that we want a margin of 10 on the left and 10 on the top. And then now if we were to go over and generate this plugin, um, well, we're not going to do that just yet. Or generate this PDF, rather. Um, because we have to let's let's go ahead and get through all this all the steps to just show off what is available here. So next up, um, I'm going to do this action called to find a new style. And this what to know about this is that you can set up the style. I'm going to call this one title, and I'm going to say it's bold, and I'll go to alignment of a left. But you can edit the fonts, you can play with the line height, you can play with the text color, so you can get a little bit of styling. And then I'll show you here in a second what it is that um, that would be used for. So now we're going to do create a create a text on a PDF model, and this text we're going to say exercise history, and I'm going to show off. I'm showing off two ways to make some styling. One last time, or then this step number five here, we've, we're we're defining a style. In this one here, we're going to say parse BB code, so that way we can edit with the rich text editor, and we're just going to bold this, and then yeah, why not make it Arial black and give it size three and hit save. Okay. And then next up, uh, we are going to create a table. And this table is going to house a bunch of stuff. And so see this style here? This is where you could put in this style that's defined or also this header style. And I'm going to put this header style in there. So that header will have, that text will have this styling on it. And then I'll say, yeah, use custom margin, sure. Drop 40 there. And then what else? Uh, we do want to head a row, which means that uh, for our data that we were talking about here, we're just going to report on here's the user. They've taken all of these classes on these particular dates. And that's all we're all, that's all we're reporting on for now. And so let's go ahead and make that happen. So the first column body, what we're going to do is we're going to do a search for all of the exercise histories. And we are going to say, that this is the user and we're gonna actually just list all of those in there you could do one if you were trying to print something for a specific user or you're trying to report on a specific thing in your database whatever that thing is whether that's a recipe or whether that is a car or what have you um, and then we're also gonna have a second column here and that is gonna be uh, let's see class name or class title perhaps and then this would be date taken and we're going to say for each, so we're, we found all the exercise histories here. And then in order for us to get the uh, people who have created it, or took the class, rather, what we're going to do is we're going to access here on our search. We're going to access each item's creators. And then we're going to go a step further. Each item's full name. So now we've got the full name of the person who's taken the class. And then for this next one, I'm just going to go copy, paste, and speed this along. So next up, we want the each for each exercise history, we want the yoga classes class title. And then for the date taken, we want each items uh, date taken. And then we want to if you're ever dealing with dates, you'll want to format them. And we'll say format as this. Great. All right, so that's pretty good. You can see that you can add a bunch of different columns and you can kind of work with it to um, create the type of layout that you're looking to have with some data. So again, we're still kind of operating in, uh, we haven't seen actually anything, and I hope that in your imagination, you're picturing this kind of square by square rectangular canvas uh, with an A4 size, because that's what we're working with here. And we're just laying out this stuff on there. And what have we laid out again before we uh, create this? I'll just remind, we can remind ourselves, we have a footer, we have a header, and in the header, we've assigned this, uh, this logo image into the header. And then we've created a style that we're using on this table here. And then we created this uh, just text that's going to sit there. And 
just be like, hey, we're looking at exercise history of of this of this person and of this uh, app, and then we have this table that shows all the ed that information, and then after that, let's also go and create text, and we'll say this will just be kind of an example, so you can see. this and we'll enter this into the footer and then we'll say override it and that way we can give it a margin and then last up we're going to conjure a PDF and your options here is save to database so I'm going to hit yes because we'll see that in a moment and then disable browser download and I'm going to say yes actually I'm going to say no to start with and then you can look at see that and then we'll take a look at what's uh, tur turning that on or off depending on your use case so here on element actions we're gonna hit show we're gonna look for this pop-up PDF and then I want to also point out here that this would be the point, point in time that after this is made that that element this PDF model a element it actually has that uh, PDF attached to it as a, as a piece of data so you can use that so you could say let's make changes to a thing and I don't know, the thing that I'm gonna change is a user's, uh, whatever, I'll just grab this first thing and I'm just giving an example that you could uh, change this and go and get, obviously you'd have your own data field for it, but you can go get this saved PDF from it and save that to your database that way. Cool, so we're gonna show this pop-up and then this pop-up, uh, one thing that we're gonna do for that download button we're gonna go here and we're gonna add this file download. And then when that button is clicked, we're gonna use this download file and we'll just say exercise history PDF. And then we'll go and get for this one that PDF elements saved PDF. Cool. So let's go and see if we have something working. And let's see, it won't close it out, but that'll be fine. So we'll generate the PDF. It's doing all that fancy stuff in the background. And then we'll get to see how it looks. Footer options, just kidding. Um, we'll get to see in a moment. And when things like this happen, everything is all good because you might have the same problem as you're setting things up. So this footer Oh, you know what? What we need to do So this is a this is a great thing to know. I'm glad that error showed up because you might have selected this without knowing the difference between activate uh, footer on PDF or activate footer on a PDF model. You always want to select the one that says PDF model, otherwise you'll get the same error that I got. And so now we'll want to make sure that this text that we have, it still is okay, it's saying go to the footer. So here's our footer. And then we want to align this to the left and call that good there. And then now let's rerun it. Rerun it. And we've learned a little bit, so it's great um, when, when those types of things happen. A little bit of troubleshooting here. And then we'll, we get this pop-up, and then you can see it downloaded here. You can see this file was stored in this location. So let's take a look at this. And we can see here that uh, we basically got this header here, this text that we added, a table, and then this footer note. So here is the user and this, it was just their, their first and last name is a bunch of test stuff. They took this title and so maybe let's go ahead and let's make two small edits and then we'll call this good. But as you can see from this video, even up to this point, that you if you played around with all of these things, I'm going to show off one of the things on the tables where you can play with. And so actually we're going to change the style uh, from the standard one to a zebra one and you can see that. And then at the bottom of the this this text, this what I want to do is I want to use custom margins, and then I want to give it a bottom margin of 20. So if I look at that, that should that should give me something that I'm liking. And then for the user, what I want to do is I just want to grab their email, uh, so that way we have data showing on all of the stuff. So instead of their full name, I'm going to go with uh, each item's email. 
and then we're going to run this one last time. And hopefully you've gotten an idea of if this plugin is something that you could utilize for creating a, a, a report of some kind. And then uh, I'm just going to also show here that if you were to disable this, disable browser download, disable browser down, if you select that to, to yes, then you won't get this automatic download. And so maybe, you'll, maybe you're just wanting to generate the PDF and then, like I said, um, you're wanting to mail it or something like that. So here you can see I added that... Uh, I added that margin at the bottom of this. I changed the styling of the this um, uh, table slightly, and you can obviously just play around with the different styling options that they have here. So that's it. Uh, thanks for making it through the video and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, like or subscribe. It means a lot. And I'll see you in another video.